underneath that heading, what I'd love you to do is, could you please jot down, this is something we did in question two, it's 2B, it's just one part of it. Could you just jot down this equation again, please? There's a very good chance you have working like it in your page already, but you might not, depending on what question you got up to. Now, I did flag this before, but I just want to state it again so it's really clear, right? What you were doing during the quick questions when we started was, you went from here, from the left-hand side to the right, and we gave that process a name. We called it, starts with an E? Expanding. Expanding, thank you very much. That's expanding. But sometimes, we actually don't want to have things, you know, expanded out. Sometimes having brackets is very useful. So sometimes we will do the reverse process, and that reverse process is called factorizing, okay? So expanding gets rid of brackets, factorizing adds the brackets in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Expanding, get rid of brackets, factorizing adds them in. Now for the next bit, while I write a few things up, I'd actually like you as I'm writing, just turn your computer on and boot it up, because that way by the time I'm finished talking, you'll be ready. Turn it on and boot it up. But let's think about some examples. Mary, we're factorizing all this. Okay, so your computer is opening up, but you don't need to speak, you don't need to look at it. I just want it to be booting up so it has time to prepare while we're working on this together. So, underneath where you've write, written that example of this is what expanding looks like, this is what factorizing looks like, here's what it looks like when you haven't been shown before what it looks like. This is no brackets, we're going to factorize here, we're going to add some brackets in, and as the name suggests, factorizing, what you need to know is what are the common factors between the objects that you're trying to factorize. Okay, let me say that again. What you're searching for is a common factor between the two things you're trying to factorize. So this hopefully will remind you from last lesson. So when you think about 48 and 10a, what's the biggest number that can factorize into both? The biggest, yeah. It's just two in this case, isn't it? They're quite large numbers, but the biggest one that they actually share in common is just two. And one of the ways you can know that is, as soon as you write down this factor out the front, right, I'm going to write a pair of brackets, that's what factorizing introduces, and then I divide each of these by two, right? I'm kind of, we call this, I'm going to take out a factor of two and put it out the front, okay? So when I divide this one by two, I get 24. And when we divide 10a by two, I will get 5a, very good. Now, you can make sure that you can't have gone any further, you couldn't have picked any bigger numbers because you're like, oh, I don't see any common factors between these two, except for one, but that's not very useful. Putting one out the front doesn't change anything, okay? Now, have a look at this next one, okay? Now, for starters, let's just think about the numbers. We'll come to the pronumerals in a minute. Merrick, what's the biggest number that you see? Five. five, very good. Now, first, we'll write down that five, okay? As you'll see in a second, there's gonna be more work to do, but that's okay. I'm taking out a factor of five, and I write my two brackets here, and I divide each one by five. Now, Merrick, you just gave us the last answer, so let's see if we can get someone else to give us the next step. Okay, so Hendu, yeah, tell me what to do next. What happens when you divide this guy by five? Oh, I just did A. Okay, so... Minus, and then you divide five by 20, you can and then A by A is Now, uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna get to that in the next line, right? Now. What have we done here? We took out a factor of five, so I've divided everything on this side by five, and that gave me what's inside the brackets. But in this case, unlike the previous one, I can do more. Jessica, what do you see? Um, so there's A and A cubed. If you take the out in next to the five. Okay, so just pause that for a second, Jessica. Hold that thought. Think about what we're doing here, right? 
We're trying to find the biggest factors we can take out. We took five, that is the biggest number. But a is also a number, isn't it? It's a pronumeral, I just don't know what the number is. Okay? So I can take out five, I've already done that. I can also take out this a that Jessica is suggesting. And then I'll have something even simpler left in here. Okay, Louise, you want to tell me what to write next? Oh yeah, go ahead. What do you want to ask? Um, so how does it come that in 5a, that in like... In 5 and 20, the biggest, the highest common factor is 5. Yep. Um, but, and you can write 5, but in the example 1, yep. you write 2 instead of 1. So why did I write 2 here? Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And so, oh wait, it's that yeah? one. It's, about, it's always about the biggest okay. number I can find, okay. right? You want. Um, let's think about this, right? So if I had written down, I'm just going to write it in another color. You don't need to write this down. If I looked at the first line, I'd say, oh, I can take out 1. I'm going to do the same thing I've been doing every other time, right? I'm going to divide this by 1, which gives me 48. And then I'm going to divide this by 1, which gives me 10a. Now, this is a true statement. It's true. It just isn't very useful um, because it's kind of like, but I, I already knew that. That hasn't changed what I've got here any, anymore. It hasn't made it simpler. Does that make sense? So you can do it. It just doesn't lead you anywhere. Krishan. Yep. So you do three minus, minus three times seven, which would be minus twenty-one. Yes. But to get six y, wouldn't if it's minus three, how do you times it in positive? Okay, we're going to get to the negatives in the next one, if that's okay, because they are a bit sneaky and tricky. I've deliberately been giving you mostly positives. We'll have a look at the next one. Okay, is that all right? Now uh, we're not quite done here, right? Can someone help me out? I'm looking at these guys. I'm dividing each one by a. Okay, Jessica, give give me what you got. One. Minus. Just have a look at that with me, because that was a bit weird and different, okay? Boys, you still with me? Thank you, everybody. So you can see what we've done, right? We took out the five, and then we we're like, wait, 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 I can keep going. I can take out A as well. What do you think of this? Can we go any further? No. Hmm. So, here's one of the cool things, right? Um, just put your pens down for a minute and look up. Uh, when you were in, when you were in primary school, right, and someone said to you, can you, and I'm not a rhetorical question, can you tell me what five takeaway three is? You all would have said two, two right? Because one, two, three, four, five, you can take away three objects, one, two, three, and then you get left with two, right? And had someone asked you, primary school you, hey, can you do three take away five? Primary school you should have responded, you can't do that. Because how can you take five away from this, right? You're like, well, you take away one, and then you take two, and then you take away three, and then I've got no more stuff to take away, right? But high school you knows that three take away five can be done, right? You can say, oh, I know what negative numbers are. So you have an answer for this. Right? Do you agree with that? And what happens is the more that you know, the wider kind of problems you can solve. Now, at the moment... This is totally fine. Give it a big tick, okay? This is perfect, right? But as you go forward, you're actually going to learn how to, you can factorize this as well. You can take a common factor out. I'm going to teach you how to do that a little bit later on, okay? But for now, that's where we can stop, all right? <coughs> can you write down example three for me? Now, this is when we're going to get to Krishan's question because he was talking about negatives, right? At least we're going to start to answer it. So here's what I'd like you to put down. Um, what am I going to give you? I'm going to give you this. Actually, I'm going to... Yeah, that'll do. Okay. So, this is starting to look a little messier, isn't it? Now, when you have a look at this, right, I'm going to ask the same question that I've been asking all the way through. And you might notice, you know, it's nice. If you can look at this and you can say, oh, I can get 5a immediately, then go there. You don't have to do it in two steps. But often it takes some time to, like, recognize what are the things you can take out. So can someone name for me just a single thing that they can... Take it. Okay, Jessica, why don't you hold that thought? You give me a few answers, which is great. Who else can give me a suggestion? Hmm. Tim, what do you see? Tim, what should I have a look? Example three. Have a look at the numbers. Have a look at the pronumerals. Can you pick a number out? Any number that's a common factor between these two. Hmm. David, can you help him out? Can you see a number that you can divide into this and you can divide into this as well? Any number you like. 
Probably four. Four works for me. Let's start with that. Okay, you might be able to think of another one. We'll come to you in a minute. Let's divide by four. Okay, and we'll, we'll get more suggestions in a second. Let's do four first. Okay, four is the suggestion. I want to honor that. Okay. When you divide negative 48 by four, what do you get? 12. Just watch out. You've got negative 48, right? So you're going to get negative 12. Okay. Now I'm going to do the next one, negative 36xy squared. That'll be minus, I'm dividing this by 4, aren't I? So I should get 9. What happens to the pro numerals? xy squared. Nothing's changed. Okay. Now, some of you had your hands up even after David suggested his number because you're like, oh, I can do more. Right, Harry, what did you see? I can see 12. Now, I can take 12 out from here, but at the moment over here, Having done David's suggested step, Jessica. <laughs> having done David's suggested step, I can't divide these guys by 12 anymore, right? This one's too small. So what could I do instead, Vishaka? Three. I could do three, right? Three will go into 12 and it will go into nine. So when I'm... Put your pens down for a second. This need, you need to look up. Look up, look up, look up. Do you remember when we went from five to five A? Did you notice that? We took out the A and you're like, ooh, now I've got the 5 and the A out the front. Now, I've already got a 4, and Vishak is suggesting that I also take out a 3. So instead of having 4 out the front, I'm going to have the 4 and the 3 together. So that gives me 12, which is actually the number that Harry suggested in the first place. Okay? So can you highlight that for me? Because once you've already taken out one number, when you take out another one, they sort of collect at the front. Okay? All right, now we're taking out 3. What will happen with this minus 12 when you divide it by 3? Yeah, here. Negative 4. Negative 4, thank you very much. I'm going to divide this by 3 as well. What are you going to get, Vishaka? Very good. Okay. Now at this point, the pro numerals, there's nothing much that we can do with those pro numerals. Um, the numbers look pretty good. 4 and 3 are very small, right? But there's one more thing we can do which will be even better than both of these. See how there's a negative here and here? There's two of them, right? And I'm like, I don't like negatives, they're gross. I want to write as few negatives as I can because negatives are easy to confuse. So I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to take out negative one. Yes, I knew it. Okay. <laughs> Yay, right. Anve, Anve picked it. Right? It's like that feeling like, I knew that was the bad guy. Okay. So if I take out a minus sign, if I take out negative one, then negative four will not be negative four anymore. It'll be positive, positive four, right? Just regular old four. This minus 3xy squared will not be minus anymore. It'll be positive. Plus. Now, just before I show you, uh, or I actually let you loose on some of the um, textbook exercises, one of the great things about all of these questions is, have a look at example 1, 2, and 3. Your final line is this factorized thing. This factorized thing. You can always know whether your factorization is, is right by checking it really simply because you're very good at expanding. This is a skill we've been working on for a while. So you could take this, you could expand and it will take you back here. You can take this, you'd expand and it will take you back here. Does that make sense? You can do it all the way through. 